Hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. So yeah, w why would I show my wife what I'm going to talk about? <laughs> so some of you uh, might know me from Comp Construction. Uh, it's a commercial construction company. I've been doing that for six years, been in the industry for 10, third generation. Um, but I'm not up here because I am an entrepreneur or I'm into construction. I'm up here because I am a gamer. So, tap. Hello. <laughs> How are y'all doing? Good. Good? Awesome. Like I said, I told you my name. I'm here because I game. Um, if you can see, I'm making sure it's the first time I've done this presentation on stage. So, uh, I've got my Instagram, Compton614. Uh, Facebook is uh, forward slash Blake Compton. You can add me on Facebook, but if we haven't met yet in person, please send me a message so I know who the heck you are. Um, and that's my email if you want to uh, further this conversation. I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, what I'm talking about today will inspire some of you to um, game yourself and find your passion and pursue it uh, to build your own community. Um, and don't add me on Twitter. You will find me there, but I don't check it. All right. So game, tap. I'm learning this app I have on my phone. It's pretty awesome. Um, oh, see, really learning right in front of you. There we go, game. So game to me is uh, not just a word anymore. When I, when I was asked to do this presentation, I was like, cool, I can talk about video games. This is going to be fun. And my wife was like, don't talk about video games. And I was like, okay, well, I just want to show you what I'm going to do, and then I'll talk about video games. <laughs> but game, for me, over my, over my lifetime, has been uh, a thing that has re reoccurred in everything that I've done from when I was a kid. Um, I was playing an online game and building a community in this online world to um, when I got into sports, I was playing soccer, and then next thing you know, I'm running a soccer fan group, and I'm building this community again around this game. Um, and so for some of you, you've played sports, you've played board games, maybe you've uh, gamed a system. Um, and so I wanted to take the word and kind of deconstruct it a little bit and talk about um, how I use it in my day to day and, and my passions. And so I want to talk about rivalry, uh, strategy and struggle uh, around uh, a key moment in my life over the last couple years uh, that have kind of helped build this next iteration of gaming. Um, has anyone ever had a rival in their life? Raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. Has anyone ever used strategy to uh, succeed and become better at something? Raise your hand. If you already had your hand, raise your hand again. Two hands. <laughs> All right. Has anyone ever dealt with struggle and, and overcome it and become better off? If you've already had two hands up, thumbs up. <laughs> if you haven't raised your hand yet, raise your hand. Oh, man, the guy over there won't raise his hand. <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to do that. That was funny. So again, I wanted to set the stage real quick, um, mostly for this guy, so we're all on the same foundation, so we're building from the same place. What I'm going to do is tell a series of stories. Uh, it's a little adventure that starts uh, back in 2016 for me and uh, comes uh, back to present time. Um, and so I wanted to set the stage on what we all do uh, what we're all thinking about as I tell these stories. And really, these four key words are who I am to a T. This is how I operate. So set the stage. Look at that. I used the animation on PowerPoint. So I wanted to say, OK, we all know our passion. So maybe you don't know your passion right now. But for today, let's just say you know your passion. You know what makes you get up in the morning and makes you smile and makes you go. Okay. So um, we want to grow. So every day you wake up and you say, I want to get better at the thing I'm doing. I want to go and pursue something and become better at it. I want to grow. Um, we want to succeed. So success is important to me, but I also define success as just doing something. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you win. Um, winning to me is just the pursuit of an opportunity. And uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's more about how you do it and not um, and why you do it than um, the actual outcome. And then we want to collaborate. This is the most important thing to me. Uh, collaboration means working together for a mutual cause, um, pursuing something that um, is bigger than yourself. 
um, and just believing in the people around you and trying to build community. So are you guys all ready to game yourself? Awesome. So I went forward and then I'm going to go back because I'm using this app and I'm learning things. So game yourself is what I've defined what I do in my life. So I find something, uh, say it's a rock, and I like a rock, and so next thing you know, I have 10 rocks and I'm giving rocks to my friends. Next thing you know, I own a quarry and all my friends are working at this quarry. Uh, it's a reoccurring theme in my life that I've had, um, and I just decided that I game myself. I, I turn things into a game and I, I use that as a tool to wake up in the morning and get excited about what I'm doing. And so I wanted to talk about my most recent uh, gamification of myself and uh, it actually involves a game. So, uh, sorry Mackenzie, I'm gonna talk about video games. So what does berries, warrior bees, a snail god, and queens have to do with anything? Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy, well, it's, wow, yeah, I like you. <laughs> this is great. So, no, it is a video game called Killer Queen, and it's the shirt I'm wearing today. It is the world's first 10 player arcade video game and there are three ways to win. You can, um, just like in life, you can win via military, you can win via economy, or you can win via snail. Right, just like life. <laughs> so I say uh, it's uh, brute force, uh, uh, being an entrepreneur, or working in a cubicle. That's the snail. <laughs> you can still win that way. So, this game is two giant cabinets, and it is ten players, five on five, and uh, it would normally be like any other video game. It would be a game where you play and you have fun, whatever, but this game is also a community-based game, and so it's an indie, based, uh, indie game that was built in 2014 by a couple of developers who accidentally built it um, after they had made a, a live-action field game and they turned it into this video game. And uh, why I fell in love with it was that you have to have friends to play this game. You cannot be a jerk, you cannot make enemies, you have to have 10 players to play this game. So it, it's innately a game of community building. And um, one of the sayings on the screen is meet thy neighbor. Uh, and that is like the idea of, hey, you're at this game and maybe you don't know everyone around the cabinet and so you have to make friends. And here I am making some friends with little girls. <laughs> so it's, I, I wanted to put this photo out because uh, accessibility is really important to me and that everyone can play this game. It's, it's for everyone. Um, it's a joystick and a button and uh, it's, it's just tapping very fast and moving a little character like Mario Brothers around. Um, and so uh, this is at Arcade Super Awesome uh, downtown near above Yellow Brick Pizza and it was the first Killer Queen cabinet in Columbus and uh, regularly at our league nights there's a transition from uh, kids to adults and so there's this overlap and this is one of those nights where there was an overlap and um, I think these girls are actually telling me how to play in this moment um, but what is really important about this oops what is really important about this is that this game absolutely involves communication. And so it's, it's, it's you, the first time I remember um, walking up the stage, or walking up the stairs at Arcade Super Awesome. Stu, where are you at? There's Stu. So Stu and I, uh, good friends in life, uh, both of us went up, up the stairs one faithful night in 2016. And there we were, we turned this corner, and there are 10 people screaming at each other. And it was like, what is going on, right? And, and I, we asked that question, this bartender just so happened to say, oh, you don't know a Killer Queen, it's a five on five game. You do these things, how to win. And he said, yeah, get on, go play. And then next thing you know, Stu and I are playing this game, we're like, oh man, this is a lot of fun. And he's like, yeah, join league night, it's on Wednesday. Now, anyone that's ever been a part of a committee knows if you join something, then you just keep getting deeper and deeper into it. Um, that's how committees work. Uh, it really worked for Mackenzie and I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and so I, we, we went to league night and there were six or seven teams and we joined this team and we were playing and we sucked and no one wanted to play with us 
And then he and I started playing more and we got better at it. And then we became the best team in the, the league. And, um, and in that moment, I realized I found something that fuels me. Um, why? Okay, so it's the passion of, of working together. Um, you've got strategy, communication. You've got building community. Um, and, and then I'm super competitive, so this game is like a very simple competitive game. And so one of the first things I want to talk about is find what fuels you. So for me, uh, what fuels me is that competition. And uh, I made a literal photo of me filling up gas, so that's like a fueling, right? You get it? Yeah. Get it? Yeah. Sorry, the Killer Queen is also a game of B puns, so there's a lot of puns. I'm going to try to throw that in if I can. You don't have to laugh, thank you. <laughs> so 2016, we're playing this game. We think we're good in Columbus. We see that on the national level, there's these big tournaments, and Columbus had never really traveled. So what did I do? I couldn't just play with my own rock. I had to uh, create something bigger than myself. And, and so uh, with the local players, we decided to do a GoFundMe to raise money to rent a van um, and get a hotel room to send two teams to Kansas City because we thought we were really good and we were going to win this tournament. Um, you'll see that there are a couple of uh, magnets on this van. Um, we collaborated with a local artist to design um, these graphics uh, of the players, of the characters in the game. And then I went to local business owners and just basically said, hey, give me $200, $300. And next time you have a passion, a thing that makes you tick and you're like, I, I need some support, no questions asked, I'll match you. So I basically, I, what the, the goal of, for myself was that I wanted to make Killer Queen uh, successful for the people and I wanted to make it accessible because there were a lot of players who were underemployed or not employed at all that could not go on this trip otherwise. So we fundraised like over $1,200 for this van and uh, hotel and we went on this crazy trip. Now, uh, we didn't win the tournament, um, but we did learn a lot of lessons and um, we, we took those lessons back home and after that point, we started to build something really important um, to the Killer Queen scene on a national level. Um, but with that, um, one of the other things that fuels me is rivalry. Well, I found my happy. I forgot about that, but I did find my happy. That's the thumbs up. So uh, one of the other things that fuels me is rivalry. And I told Zach that uh, Zach down here is the guy off to the left here. And that is his wife. And this is their 10th anniversary party. So I got this awesome photo of them playing. They're drinking champagne. Um, and uh, I wanted to talk about rivalry because uh, you, I feel that it's important to have someone that can best you in your life, um, whether it's your wife, um, which my wife bests me every day. Um, you're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, but it's, again, rivalry doesn't necessarily mean that you uh, have to compete to win. It, it can be a thing that you use to compete to get better together. It can be a mutually uh, beneficial thing. And over the last two years, I've had a rival. This guy. <laughs> so if you've ever been to Dirty Frank's, you know this guy. He's a very small guy that wears the same jacket and hat every day of his life. Um, he's a wonderful man. Uh, but you need someone to push you, and this man has pushed me. Now, uh, this is where I get kind of emotional, and I think that's the important part is the emotion, is that over the last two years, he and I have gone deep, deep into being enemies, and very close to being friends, and then back to enemies, and then absolutely best friends. We've traveled the country to Austin, Chicago, Charlotte, uh, many other cities, I can't remember, St. Louis. Um, and what he has done for me is he and I have the same competitive energy. And on his darkest days where he's not good, not good as like, as like dark, and on my darkest days where I'm not good, we see each other, we're a mirror. And so that competitive energy is really important to me that I see something in him that we both want to get better. We, both, we don't want to get angry and mad about a game, a dumb B game that you're pressing a little button. 
Um, and so I found that without him, um, I wouldn't still be playing this game, even though some days I don't want to play the game with him. And I, I say, go and find your rival. And it doesn't need to be someone that you're competing with to beat them. It could just be someone that makes you better. Um, it could be your wife. It could be your friend. It could be an enemy. Or it could just be a, a stranger. So here we are. We've uh, built this scene up. And uh, we've traveled. Uh, and now we're back in Columbus in 2016. And um, we're starting to deal with a lot of emotions. So one of the struggles that we dealt with was um, a complete loss of everything. We went from six uh, teams of 30 or 40 people all the way down to f four or five people on a night. So a 10 player game, you have four or five people there. It was really depressing. And it was really emotional. And that was when me and Craig both went at each other the most. And it was the darkest of our days. But with that struggle, with, uh, we, we found a way to overcome it. And, um, and, and, and I speak about overcoming in a sense that we lost everything. And one of the days, um, one day in 2016, we're like, guys, we're not fun to be around. Uh, we've created a toxic environment. We're so competitive that no one enjoys being here. And so there's only four or five of us. And so we said, OK, we need to do something. We need to band together and build something. And that day, we decided to be friendly. It was, it was this crazy, wild idea. But we just wanted to be friendly and nice. And like when someone wanted to play the game, we're like, yeah, you can play the game with us. And, um, and we pushed on. And um, we all became really close friends. The four or five of us traveled to every tournament and played together and built a name for Columbus across the country. Um, and, and then finally, um, with that struggle, and I guess I want to talk about struggle for you all. Remember, like, struggle is really important. You have to have those dark moments to have those great moments. And in the moment of struggle, you've got to keep going. And, uh, and so it turned into a strategy. And so there we are. Um, planning uh, what we were going to do, where we were going to take this small group, this little tribe. And um, we decided to do something. So when I say do something for you all, that's whatever that makes you happy and whatever uh, you can build your community around. Um, for me, do something, it literally means don't, don't have an objective of, of an actual A to Z success. Just go A, B, C and see where it takes you. OK, I should have said A, B, C, where it takes you. That would have been better with a pun. Um, and then listen. OK, one of the most important things, as any entrepreneur knows, um, you got, start to surround yourself with people that listen to you, and you stop listening. And so I've always practiced listening. And I want to listen to people. And in, in, uh, we listen to this crowd. Uh, that was, in, in this situation, we were listening to people talk about what they wanted to see the scene grow into. And we wanted to build a community. Um, and then the most important thing I took away from this whole experience was um, collaboration and be willing to give without getting. And so that, to me, in this moment was, uh, here I am, a CEO of a company. I've got people who are employed or underemployed um, or not employed at all. And I, I could give back without caring what I was getting back. So for the first three or four tournaments, everything I did, I was just paying for. I was making it happen. And it wasn't about getting a return. It was about building a successful environment to grow a community and give back to the people that were giving me so much. And um, so that's where we build a community. So in 2017, um, we started to have this critical mass of people. And these people were like, we want more. And I realized that more meant more killer queen time, because most, most of these gamers are a little addicted to it. <laughs> And so I decided, why not buy my own cabinet and, and uh, have a place to do this at? And um, so for three months after league night, all of us would go back to my house, and we would dream, and we would plan this space this, this, uh, for this other cabinet. And it, 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 what, that moment was so magical to me. Alex Bandar said it to me uh, best from the Columbus Idea Foundry. He said, you crowdsourced a business. So we created a Facebook group, and we would have these conversations about what the name was going to be, what the place would look like. 
And then I started to have uh, drinks and coffee with people and I'd tell them about this idea and I'd invite them to this Facebook group and I built this critical mass of designers and crafters and videographers and technologists and, and brought them all together and just said, hey, we're gonna build something bigger. And, uh, oops. So uh, in, um, so we got this address, 480 West Town Street. So it's down in Franklinton. You might have seen it. It was a purple building. Now it's a white and gray building. Um, so very soon we're going to have murals all the way around it once the uh, weather is nicer to us. And it turned into this place called Close Quarters Social Gaming Club, as Mackenzie was talking about. And it's a members only gaming club. And um, it was 100% volunteer built. Everything was volunteer built. Uh, all of my money put into it. Um, many other people's money, time, treasure were put into this space. And um, we, when we first built it, I keep tapping the button, I apologize. Then we grew our community. And so here is our first tournament we had there. And I want to show the photos are kind of getting this critical mass, right? And um, again, I want to point out that this isn't a functional business. This is a passion. Um, this passion is building a community. And um, there are ups and downs. And we've been growing together. Um, and like I said, I want you guys to maybe find a community that you can be a part of, or maybe you're already part of a community, and, and, and give that energy to. I think I want to point someone out in the room right now uh, that, that I know does this, that walks the walk. It's Troy. I want to wave, wave hi and say hi. Troy, you're doing Startup Storytellers, or Startup Week. I'm going to start up week. So I'm sure you'll be talking about it in the Q&A. But I want to point that out, that there are people in this community that just get involved. Okay, whatever that is. Autumn, you do the same thing too with your business. It's awesome what you do. And there's, it's, you grab your passion, whatever it is, and it doesn't have to be something where you're like, I'm going to make money at this. It's grab it and do it. And if you do it right and you, you listen to your people around you and the people that love what you love, you can start to grow a community and it, do, and it can be competitive without being toxic. Um, let's see here. So. One of the things I wrote down, and I really wanted to read this off, is that building a community by being an active participant can be the most important role of your life, and it can also simply just be a game that you enjoy. So this game for me is Killer Queen. I've done this in many other different ways, but the game kind of embodies this building of community. You have to walk up, you, you have to walk up to this cabinet and say, hey, I want to try this game. Someone has to teach you. You have to have a teacher, and then full circle, you have to teach to bring more people into the game. So it's a game of uh, inherent community building. And all across the country, there are cities like us with these games and the same kind of mentality. When we travel to Chicago or Charlotte or St. Louis, we don't have, a, we don't have to rent a hotel. We stay at these people's houses. One, one trip to Charlotte, I didn't even know the guy. He left the key underneath his mat and just said, hey, you can go in and just stay at my house. I'd never met the guy. That's this community that this game has brought together, and that's the passion that I hope you guys can find in whatever you love to do. So, like I said, here's, this is my main team. You've got um, Matt to the left, Heather, and Craig, and Carlos. Um, this is at uh, Minneapolis Nationals 2, uh, where we took uh, uh, ninth place out of uh, 53 teams and uh, represented Columbus. We were the highest seeded Columbus team. Um, and I want to say that I found my happiness uh, kind of as what I was talking about, where my passion meets my yearn, yearning for constant learning and growth and community. And I want to ask you guys to go and find your passion, find your community, and find uh, places where you can grow in your life and, and game yourself. And uh, I want to end, end this little, little conversation on um, a, an amazing photo of you saw where we were only having four people, then we had this small group talking, and then this bigger group talking. In January, January 13th and 14th, we hosted our first tournament of the year at close quarters, and it was that big snowstorm. We had uh, 18 teams, 12 cities showed up, and of those 12 cities, um, uh, most of them had someone have a flight canceled 
or a snow, snow emergency and not a single player canceled. Every single one of them showed up. And at the end of the tournament, um, we snapped this shot. Well, I, I, I keep doing that. I found my happy. Found my happy. Um, look at that. That is community right there. These are people from all over the country that came to Columbus, Ohio for a tournament. Now, we, we aptly named it the Winter Cluster for a reason. Um, and we were laughing at them when they showed up, but they all did show up. And they said, we set the bar. And not only do we set the bar for uh, a venue um, that caters to this game, we set the bar for uh, an eSports experience and for uh, a, a place that is fully uh, dedicated to a community. And the coolest, uh, most uh, wonderful gesture happened. So first, second, and third place got cash prizes. And all three of those teams donated all the money back to close quarters because they saw what we were doing and they saw the importance of building this community. And nowhere across the country has that ever happened. And I just want to tell you guys, go and find a way to game yourself to push yourself into your passion and grow your community um, and play well together. Thank you. <laughs>